Previously, we hit a bit of a roadblock when we tried to define a server action in a client component. Next.js wouldn't allow it. But don't worry, I've got a neat solution for you. The trick is to separate our server action into its own file, keeping our server-side logic cleanly separated from our client-side components. Let me show you how to do this. First, create a new folder called Actions in your source folder. Inside this folder, create a file called products.ts. We're using this name because we are working with products, but feel free to name it whatever makes sense for your project. Now, let us set up our product.ts file. Here's the thing about uServer directive. You can place a directive at the top of an async function to mark the function as a server action, or at the top of a separate file to mark all exports of that file as server actions. So we start this file with the use server directive at the top. Next, we will move our types, errors, and form state into this file and export them. Then we will bring over our create product server action. But we will remove the use server directive from inside the function as it's not needed here anymore. Let's make sure we import product and redirect functions. At the top, import add product from Prisma DB and import redirect from next navigation. Make sure to also export create product. Now let's update our page.tsx file. We will delete the imports for add product and redirect. We will import form state and create product from our new products.ts file in the actions folder. We will still use use action state with our create product function. Now, if you save the file and try this out in the browser, we have an error that says, did you mean use server? So let's make sure we don't have any extra spaces. Navigate to products db hyphen create. And without filling the form fields, click on the submit button. We have formdata.get as not a function. Now this is because when we use use action state and pass in create product, the function automatically receives the previous state as the first argument. So previous state of type form state. Now, when you submit with empty fields, you'll see the error messages, title, price, and description, all of them are required. When you fill everything in correctly and submit, your new product will show up in the list. And there you have it. We have successfully implemented form validation using use action state with a separately defined form action. This approach gives us the best of both worlds. We get to use client-side React hooks for managing our form state by leveraging the power of server actions for data mutations. For our next topic, I want to take a quick detour to talk about pending returned from use form status and is pending returned from use action state. Supporting the channel is free. Please like and subscribe. It helps a lot.